All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you tuning into another episode. And guys, guess what? We're about to give you a high school fishing tournament report with I got Walker Chester and Carmelo Jones. And guys, we won. How about that? How, how about the day? It, it was it was a hard and hard, hot day. It was very cool in the morning. It really got hot later in the day, but it, it we we stepped up. You know, uh -huh. we took advantage of the the bites we did get. Yep and executed very well i think carmel what you think i think we started out hot and then throughout the day it started leveling down then towards the end when it was time to wrap it up we, we that's right it back in. that's we right back in. that's we right back to it good deal guys uh before we get into it we're gonna we're gonna go over our baits we're gonna talk about uh the tackle we used how we caught the fish my man walker here caught his pb during the event his lake personal best it was 579 right something like that i think it's i think it's 579 it, it, it even happened yesterday but it's been 24 hours since <laughs> then but before that guys i was gonna let you know future marine uh, if you're looking for a newer use boat or at any of your boating needs check out future marine i work with future marine they're a supporter of me and uh just when help what i do and they also help support our fishing team if you see them on the jersey uh, and guys so just check it out link will be in the description okay guys so yesterday metal already said we started off hot but did we just um what, what's what was one thing that i'll let y'all talk about what was one thing before we started off hot that was kind of unique you know we we just got done unloading the boat and we were driving around this bend and we saw this grass mat that was kind of by itself something different yeah and something different from everything else from the lake and three or four boats had gone past it into this cove and they didn't they failed to see the fish that was hiding in that grass with the bait fish and ended up right when we saw that you know coach e said something about it you know saying hey that's that's a little different about that time we start seeing fish start to school and so we we pulled up and that's where it started yeah so we we saw these fish start schooling and guys in this lake so you know this lake we're fishing is a lowland reservoir shallow lake south arkansas stumpy has a boat lane that's pretty sketch i mean it's not like sketch in some places but you can't just run outside the lane so we see them schooling kill the motor and then we trim it up and then as we work up there my man uh Mello has not uh got to throw in the hover rig much before now walker has uh so walker picked up a buzz bait but my man Mello, he right here caught him on the hover rig with a pink fluke okay that's one of my things i've talked about i like i'm gonna let Mello talk about how he caught he caught like three fish in like what 10 minutes yeah it was pretty fast yeah so there was one time back to back cast so Mello, just talk about that what were you doing with the hover rig any action and well the only action i was really doing was just jerking it mm -hmm. just jerking other than that, that is really it. Just a simple little jerk. Yep. And then at the end, it was back to back cast. First cast, I caught one. Second cast, I yep. caught one. Third cast, I tried to bring one up and he got off. It was it was real intense because I was so happy I got <laughs> bites back to back. My first cast, second yeah. cast, third cast. Mm -hmm. And once we found that little spot, I mean, we was on them. Yeah, so, so and that's one thing, I, you know, uh, Melo even asked at one point because he's not fished the hover rig as much. He was like, hey, uh what what i need to do i was like hey don't you don't got to give too much action that gliding act that gliding motion that this hover rig does that that hover rig hook by core tackle it kind of makes it create a little darting action and uh now these weren't big fish guys and that's one thing about the lake uh i i, I did not mention this lake's unique if you watch my practice video with little halt and howard um the lake has big fish in it and i told these dudes leading up catching small fish might be harder than catching big fish but there's a slot you can only keep two fish over 20 inches and so you kind of have to catch little fish so we caught four keepers in like 20 minutes one we had five but i i, I made the decision as the coach okay uh to let one go because it was close to 12 and i was like hey we we don't need it we need to go catch a big one and um before i let walker talk about what he caught a fish on for me as a coach in this tournament what i get to do is help them because each high school tournament's different so i was going to let you guys know i get to help them coal and and kind of the coaling process um i cannot tie knots i cannot run the trolling motor i really i gotta drive the boat okay I, I, they can't drive the boat i gotta drive the boat um and this like i don't want them driving the boat but uh, <laughs> so so anyway guys that, that's my job as a coach and to help make decisions and to help teach my big thing out there i'm out there coaching teaching there's a lot of the uh, coaches in the boat that just sit there all day and they might just make some calls or whatever but no I'm out there there's times I'm standing right next to these dudes like saying hey throw here do this and they might get on my nerves but 
guess what? I mean, you watch a football or baseball game, it's the same thing. So, hey, what'd you catch your fish on? So, I caught mine. The first fish of the day was a white buzzbait. Mm -hmm. This is a six cents crawl. Uh, the old I, bongo. The old bongo the, is what the they call it. The old bongo. <laughs> you know, I, I saw those schooling fish, and I had a uh, I had a popper tied on as well. But something about, you know, throwing up and grass with the popper, it's not right. You got them treble hooks on. You need something that can kind of get through there a little bit better, and that's what the buzz bait is a really good bait for. I yeah. wanted an exposed hook, but not so exposed I was getting caught up in everything I threw at. So this buzz bait was really good at going through there and, you know, creating a lot of noise and attraction to the bass, you know, as they're jumping up and feeding at these bait fish on the top. And this just that flutter kick on the back with the this the buzzing of it just that's a good buzzing sound <laughs> yeah. so so that that's actually brazalo uh, custom lures buzz bait i've talked about it before guys it's out of a uh, uh small uh, like company in sherwood arkansas uh, i had those given to me in a tournament i know people that used them and uh they're loud and so i, I had you know actually had them tied on four for them to try and like i said he caught some fish right off the bat with it caught two one was a good over uh, over 12 like 13 14 inches and the other one was a, like that close mark so then guys it got slow um so i did some practice as you guys want to watch another video and i tried to find some bigger fish offshore we found some fish offshore and but then what happened was um, it wasn't really the same. The day before we had a cold front, and, and it was a good cool front for Arkansas. Uh, day of the tournament, it got up to 90 degrees, but the day before it was 70 and rainy. Them fish changed, and we started seeing it. Like, we went to one spot, they weren't really there, and I told these guys, hey, it's not right. But then I started seeing bait fish on our 2D and, uh, 2D and uh, down imaging, and bass was under them, to where before I just idle over bait balls, not sea bass. And so we idled some of these bait balls, and then all of a sudden, you know, I already had an Alabama rig tied on for, for these guys to, to throw over brush piles. And um, then, you know, so I'm like, hey, we might need to throw these at those bait balls and see if those bass are gonna react to them. And uh, we're using the live scope. Uh, we have live scope on the boat, teaching them how to use a live scope. Now, before, if any of you guys get upset, they enjoyed it. This is y'all's first really time seeing the live scope in action. Y'all seen it before, I know, with uh, with Coach Howard. Yes. But like, last year I took these guys in a tournament and we got fifth place in a big tournament. I didn't even have it on. Uh, we didn't need it that day but this day we did and so the, I, the the alabama rig which is one i like it's just that young flash mob junior i did not i did not use these jig heads that come with this little package i had some jig heads from a local dealer in town a local uh local man it's called m, m custom creations i'll put the link to them but they support our uh, team there they are right there so i'm using his i was using his jig heads but the uh swim baits we were using were the yum scottsboro sexy shad color but the three inch so we saw some bait balls got the live scope going and i'm up there walker's running it and i'm like hey throw and he throws and then you start catching the little ones i catch little ones yeah and then i'm like all right we might be able to take this so then it was what uh, it was 11:53 when you caught your big but then we went idling some more how much time throughout the day y'all guys thought we idled a lot it, it was, was a lot of it was a lot of it was a lot of graphing and <laughs> so stuff i say guys is not cra i'm not just crazy okay now, i did some of this to give these guys a breast at time because it was hot uh they played football the night before an away game big physical game they were tired and i wanted to like at times i'm idling like one of them would sit by me and i'd be teaching the other one might be resting okay mellow might have rested more than walker at times but, <laughs> but, but but guys we you know i so i did some of that like hey here you know so when i'd find some stuff i'd be like hey check this out this is what we're looking for and um, then all of a sudden, you know, uh, it was about 11.40, we found a bait ball with some big fish around it. And then all of a sudden, near, of course, the bait ball was a single tree and a big fish on that tree. And Walker got that big fish to bite. Just talk about that real quick. Talk about that fish catch. So, you know, I was sitting there scanning, you know, fanning out, looking at the bait fish. And there was this single tree. Yep. Just a single tree out in the middle of the lake. And there was, was nothing really around it. You know, there was bait fish here and there, you know, to the left and right of it. And I saw this good glowing beam right in the middle of it. And I said, you know what? If that bass will bite, it's going to be a good one. So I threw it, and I brought it right over the tree. And it was just like that. Came up and swarmed it. It came and up there quick. I was standing back here behind him, and I could see it. Like, it just zoom, came up and ate it. He sets the hook. And did you thought you were hung up at first? Or? I, I, thought, I, I thought I was hung up because when I started reeling, it just felt like, the whole rod was just going down you know i wasn't getting any slack you know the line yeah. wasn't going anywhere 
and I was like, oh man, I'm hung up. And about that time, I start seeing it. The line just starts swimming off, and I was like, get the net. Get the net. <laughs> and it was exciting. Mello got the net. Uh, I have it recorded on my phone in the vertical form, and um, it got pretty loud and exciting. Everybody in that part of the lake heard us. Okay, heard us, which it was your personal best. Uh, I, I, you know, we're over here. I didn't weigh it while we're in the boat, but they're like, How big you think it is? I was like, Guys, five pounds. If it had some weight, could maybe be close to seven, end up being five, seven, nine. Yeah, so man, pretty exciting. Nothing like for me to watch kids catch fish and then catch big fish as well. Um, so we carry that throughout the rest of the day. We, we lost a couple fish here and there. Uh, some other lures we threw, and Carmelo actually caught some fish. It's still on his pole right now. This is an epic swim bait head. It has a wire weed guard, okay, if y'all can see it. I've talked about it in some videos on fish at the moment. Had a Kytec on there, a little underspin, and those fish man got finicky as the day went on. Another one we tried and threw was this six inch braid swim jig, and uh, we put the Kytec on it as well, and we just kind of a little bit match it. I actually like this dude a little bit too. And, uh, and then these two also got to catch fish doing some other offshore tactics, okay? Um, I'm gonna get into one here in a minute, and y'all guys can probably guess, but I mean, we had this big crankbait. Which one did you I mean? Y'all both caught fish. We had it. We had an eight. This is a C20 by six inch. You guys heard me talk about it. And then here's a 5XD. Which one uh, did y'all rather? Which one did you have more fun with? I mean, we didn't catch big fish with these. I, I but. really, uh, I like the bigger one. Yeah, the big one. That big one. I mean, you farther you get down there, it's pretty deep. There you go. Yeah. So some people, Mello just said it on the deal. Some people are like, why you throw these bigger ones? You can cast it farther and get it down there faster. Mm -hmm. And then you're down there hitting the bottom, hitting the stumps. And one thing I'm not afraid with is getting these hung guys. Um, some people are like, why are you throwing this in timber? You might get it hung. Hey, you're create, you're, you're trying to reflect off of cover, trying to create reaction strike. But guys, um, then the last lure, and I only thing I, I kind of, if I look back on the day, I kind of wish I would let Mello try this as well. We tied this on last second. Walker caught two fish, and I kind of wish I let Mello then try it. Uh, but our man lost his Alabama rig, all right, in the wood. We only lost one. That was the one, okay? Uh, so we lost Alabama rig, and we tied this dude on. There it is. The old Dixie Jet. This is the Falcon spoon, not the Talon, the Falcon. So I tied this dude on, and then what happened? You know, <laughs> we, we, we start, we graft a little bit, and you, you had this idea. You tossed the bait at me and said, tie this on. So I tied it on, and I had no clue where we were going with it. Yep. I've never... The spoons I've thrown have always been the little small ones, you know, for trout, you know. And so I was like, dang, this is a pretty big bait. You know, what fish is going to eat this? And, you know, we pull up on some bait fish with the 2D, and I dropped the live scope. And I'm, I'm looking. I said, you know what, I, I'm just going to try it. So I dropped it right down on their head, gave it a couple jerks, and it was just like that. And, you know, I think my my... I was scared of throwing it almost because it seems so big because it's so it's such an imitating bait you know and it, i was scared to throw it because how big it was because you think what fish is going to eat this it still has a scale on it how about that yeah, yeah. you go ahead so <laughs> like and so you know i think that's part of people's problems when fishing is you know they they're scared of how big the bait is when really i mean we throw them how big are jigs you know them yeah. huge i mean a big I mean, one ounce jig with a yeah. brush hog on it yeah i mean you can't be scared of the size mm -hmm. when fishing you gotta some days you gotta go big yep and I, and I, we talk about big and we're throwing three inch little swim baits here so i just you know it was near the end of the day i was like hey now this one area that he's talking about we out of we already grafted earlier and there's actually no wood around it so i was like hey you can throw this right here. Do not throw it over there in them trees or in that brush pile. <laughs> throw it right here because you see the hooks on there. And I didn't want us to lose that, okay, uh, or him, you know, lose it as well. So, guys, um, man, I appreciate you coming onto the channel today, talking about the tournament. Uh, any other words or anything um, to close it out? Keep fishing. Never stop. Keep, keep fishing. Okay. Hey, it was uh, it was part, part of the day was tough. Uh, I'd say grind, but I know there's other things that can be grinds like – working on that farm across the road or, or you know, or working, working, you know, and on a, on a, saying like a job or whatever. I mean, right, but we're out there fishing and it was tough. It was, you know, hot, but uh, y'all stayed after. I enjoyed it and I uh, appreciate you guys coming. Thank you for coming on the show. And a anybody, if you have any uh, comments, please leave it down there. Any questions, feel free to ask. If you like this forum video, uh, remember on this channel now, I'm doing a lot of different type of content, having people on like this, my young kids that I've coached, and to just fishing days, anything you know else I do, fishing topics, 
But well, appreciate you guys. Thank y'all for coming. Thank you for letting us come up here and talk. All right, man. We'll see you on the next.